Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right into this one. Oh, yeah. Florida has joined Tennessee in their lawsuit against the NCAA. I just found this out today. This does not surprise me in the slightest. I was fully expecting this. I was unavoidably detained. Okay. And there are many reasons why. As you know, we've been fighting the NCAA. They decided to uh, focus on Tennessee over NIL because they got all distraught over uh, Nico Iamaliava and his uh, $8 million deal. They didn't care about that. Here's what they cared about. He took an airplane ride from California to Knoxville. That's what they were all distraught about. And guess who paid for it? The NIL collective that he signed with. And for some reason, they decided that was some big deal and they were going to hammer us over it. And Tennessee wasn't going to take that crap. They just weren't. So we sued them. Skirmetti, our attorney general, fine attorney general, uh, went after him and he warned him. He warned him before it happened. It's your last chance to walk away. Remember, you wanted this. But they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't be reasonable. So we've been hammering them ever since. And currently we do have a, uh, a stay or a uh, injunction basically. They, in other words, they can't do anything to any of the teams out there. Not a single team can take any uh, punishment from the NCAA over NIL. And they've actually suspended all of their investigations until this case plays out. Now, the reason I fully expected Florida, especially Florida, to join this lawsuit was the fact they had already nailed Florida State over some nonsense. Their offensive coordinator drove a young man to an NIL meeting, was not in the meeting, drove him there. They gave him a three-game suspension, a two-year show cause, they lost five scholarships, and about a half a million dollar penalty. Now, had he taken a $30 Uber, I guess it would have been fine. But because he drove him to the meeting, they had to hammer him. So Florida State was not happy about that. Then Florida, of course, had the Jaden Rashada situation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that had the Florida Gators concerned. I talked to some insiders at Florida, which I actually do. I know I give Florida a lot of grief, but uh, they've got some good YouTubers down there. They were very concerned about the Jaden Rashada thing, especially since there was a contract and all of that, and they had that NIL collective that was kind of a little bit out of control. They were worried. So all I can say to the Florida Gators is this. You're welcome. Absolutely, you're welcome. We kind of saved you on that one. But uh, I guess in return, they've decided to join this lawsuit, which I, I can't believe it took them this long, but it may be that you know it takes them a while to do the paperwork. And I believe their attorney general is Ashley Moody, and uh, she's a pretty tough uh, negotiator, so they'll be coming hard at the NCAA as well. And it's kind of a, a bit of a pig pile right now. We've also got, let's see, who else? Um, actually, let me pull up the article. And this is the Knoxville News Sentinel, and this is by Adam Sparks. And if you're not reading Adam Sparks, I don't know what to tell you, he does a great job. And anything that he does, I feel very confident that it's been uh, thoroughly researched. More states join Tennessee. We'll get into the exact states and all that. It was Florida, New York, District of Columbia. I didn't know the District of Columbia even had football. Maybe that's basketball or something is why they joined. And of course, we already had Virginia. And uh, they said it was eye-opening in the plaintiff's amended complaint filed Wednesday in the Eastern District of Tennessee. So they've already uh, filed this. And our Attorney General, uh, Jonathan Scarmetti, said, we're glad to keep fighting to protect student athletes from illegal NCAA rules. I welcome the addition of our bipartisan partners to this case. So now that's five. We've got five different entities uh, going against the NCAA. And here he talks about uh, what I just explained, how they had targeted Florida and Florida State. Two years of probation, reduced scholarships, et cetera, which is nonsense. The $13 million deal to uh, Jaden Rashada. And I was fully expecting the NCAA to call me because I have the original contract. I've shown it to you multiple times. This was it right here. And I knew it was official because of the Florida Gator uh, logo on it. And this was really what was going to get him in trouble. And don't ask me how I got that contract. It was not easy. But hey, I go the extra mile for you folks, and you know that. Now, we also are getting into something that's uh, going to probably be even more important in this lawsuit, I, and we're going to win. The reason uh, there was so much trouble with the NCAA is that they were retroactively trying to go back in time 
and say now these rules apply even though all they had were some very loose guidelines. Now every time I say that, somebody goes in the comment section, Oh no, there were rules. Y'all broke the rules. You broke the God. You broke the God. Okay, you don't take my word for it. Let's see if this convinces you. Right now, there are no rules around how name, right. image, and likeness works. And for your audience, that's the opportunity for student athletes to benefit from their name, image, and likeness. And yeah, that was the NCAA president. D did you understand what he said? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah. Now, most of y'all understood that right off the bat, but there'll be a few in the comment section. Y'all are a bunch of rule breakers. You need to have the death penalty. Whatever. But in this article, he does talk about this uh, big house case, house versus the NCAA. And this is an antitrust case where uh, former players over the last several years that didn't get any money whatsoever are suing. And they're actually suing, I believe it was $1.5 billion. But here's the issue. Because it is an antitrust suit, the damages can actually be tripled. So it's really over $4 billion that could be lost. So the NCAA is trying to settle. And this is also a lot of your big, your big dogs. This is Greg Sankey. This is uh, Petiti. These are all the big guys going, uh, you know, this could be a lot of money for each college. And if it does wind up being over $4 billion, that's a major problem. Because even if uh, they settle for like $1 billion, that's like $10 million per school, which can be done. But not every school has $10 million sitting around. You know, your big dogs do. Your Georgia, your Tennessee, your Alabamas, Ohio State, all that. They can do it. But if you go down to these little small schools, they don't have $10 million sitting around. So this is a very dangerous situation. So what they're trying to do is f form a settlement to where they uh, agree to some amount of money, and then they start paying college athletes. And it talks about here, hey, could finally stabilize the, NL the NIL space and larger question about paying athletes, et cetera. And that's where we're headed to. It's going to be something along those lines. Now, as a former athlete myself, I wouldn't want to be an employee of the University of Tennessee or any other school. I'd rather just do the NIL through the collective and not have to deal with all the paperwork and all the crap that you got to go through. And it's, it's a lot. When you start turning somebody from, I guess, an independent contractor to an employee, there's just a lot more you've got to do. And the employee's got to do a lot of stuff. So I don't know that the athletes are really going to like that, but it may have to happen that way because there's so many wanting some sort of a cap on how much can be paid out. And the other problem is if they do profit sharing, understand most schools don't make any money. Most schools actually break even or lose money on sports. Now their football program or their basketball program might make money, but let me go ahead and tell you, when it comes to the other sports, they all lose money. For example, I was on the golf team at Tennessee. Do you think we made any money or sold any tickets? I can go ahead and assure you the answer is no on that. So think about what's involved with that. And we were the smallest team of all the teams. Okay, and there was like 14 of us and five were on the travel squad. And, you know, we'd get in a van or uh, sometimes we'd fly and you would go to whatever um, venue you were going to play your tournament at. All right, you've got to pay for hotel rooms. You've got to pay for three meals a day. You've got to pay for gas. You've got to pay the coach. You've got to pay the assistant coach. Our scholarships, which, um, you know what? I'm going to give you a little insight on this. With golf, there were five total scholarships allowed, and you had 14 guys. So most everybody was on a partial scholarship. I was on a partial. Everybody pretty much was. I don't remember if anybody was on a full ride. We might have had one or two guys on a full ride that were like all Americans. I can think of a couple of guys that probably were either full ride or close. But most everybody else was on a percentage. And that might have meant that you got your books paid for and your uh, lodging or your food or whatever it was, or your uh, tuition. And back then, tuition wasn't that bad. Now I'm sure it's ridiculous because everything's gone up. And don't get me on the inflation thing. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. But anyway, every team loses money. Just go ahead and know that. So when everybody thinks, oh, these, these schools are making so much money on sports, Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. They're really not. A lot of them lose money on their sports. They just use the football team to hopefully pay for all the other sports that we have. So how do you, you really can't have profit sharing because there really is no profit for most of the colleges. So they may do a revenue thing. Well, how much rev, let's say you take $20 million out of the revenue of a school and every school's got to take 20 million. Well, if all you take in is $40 million, 
you're going to take half the revenue. How are you going to pay for everything else? So there's, this is going to be complicated. Just go ahead and know it's going to be very complicated. So they're trying to work this out, but um, it's going to take a lot of cooperation, a bunch of attorneys, and eventually it'll get worked out one way or the other. I'm not 100% sure which route it's going to go. If I was a player, I would just want the NIL. Forget all this other crap. But they may have to because every time something doesn't go somebody's way, they sue. And the NCAA loses every lawsuit because that's just how it is. They've been breaking the rules forever. And they, and they won't stop. They're, they're going to stop because they're being forced to stop. And they're scared to death this thing's going to go to the Supreme Court. If they don't settle it, and if it goes to the Supreme Court, they're going to get absolutely brutalized. Because several members of that court have already said, do not allow another case to come up to us. Because if they do, you think you've already been whooped once, we're going to knock it out of the park. They don't like the way the NCAA handles things. And they've, they've told them straight up, so what you're doing is against the law. Stop breaking the law, asshole! You've run your business in the polar opposite against what um, the Sherman Act says. And we can't wait for you to bring another case up here. So they're, they're very nervous about ever having anything go back to the Supreme Court. So they're going to want to settle. So anyway, I did want to give you that breaking news that Florida, which is the big state, um, has joined Virginia and Tennessee, and we did pick up New York and um, District of Columbia. So we've got five different entities uh, suing the NCAA. Very interesting stuff. And I want to keep an eye on this House versus NCAA antitrust case because that's the big enchilada. I think we're going to win the other one. I'm not terribly concerned about it, but I will follow it. But this uh, House versus NCAA, it's the big dog. It's the one that's going to have the biggest impact on college sports. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know, continue to cover all these big sports stories. And if you've not subscribed, hit this little button right here. I would certainly appreciate it. Cost you not a dime. Helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.